Hi there, it's David Williams. Uh, today I want to talk to you about capacitors in circuits and how capacitors behave in AC circuits. And more specifically, look at what the relationship between voltage across and current through a capacitor when there's a sinusoidal signal applied to it. Now you'll, you'll recall that the relationship between the current through and the voltage across a capacitor with a changing voltage is equal to, so the current is equal to the capacitance times the rate of change of that voltage across the capacitor. Now, if this voltage across the capacitor here is sinusoidal, so it's just a, a sine wave and it's got some peak voltage and it's got some frequency we'd have a, an equation to describe that voltage look, to look less, something like that. So plugging that equation, plugging this equation for the voltage across the capacitor into this equation for the voltage, or for the current through the capacitor, we get C times the rate of change of Vp sine 2 pi Ft dt. So the rate of change of this sine Sine, sine wave, uh, let's see, closing brackets there. Now if we just, if we, if we go through and, and take the derivative of, of this equation, what we'll end up with is Vp times 2 pi F times C, the capacitance, times cos so it's a cosine of 2 pi Ft. So if the if the voltage is a sine wave, the current's a cosine wave. And so they're both sinusoidal, it's just that the current is going to be leading the voltage in this case. Now, if we set, well, we look, here's, here's our part of the, the cosine part of the function. And here, all of these numbers are constants. I mean, as long as the frequency, as long as the frequency is not changing that number there will create its uh, its own constant. And remembering back to the format for the sinusoidal waves, these this constant in front of the cosine is the peak current. So we get an equation for the current that looks like this, where this peak voltage or this peak current is related to the peak voltage based on this 2 pi fc relationship. So that's one of the important things we want to see is what is the relationship between the peak voltage and the peak current across and through this capacitor. And we see that the peak current is equal to the peak voltage times 2 pi fc. So 2 times pi times the frequency of the signal times the capacitance of the capacitor. Or to look at it another way, if we re rearrange this equation, we get peak voltage over peak current is equal to, peak voltage over peak current is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. And this relationship between peak voltage and peak current here, that number there, we call the capacitive reactance. Describes how the peak voltage and peak current relate to each other in, in and across a capacitor. So capacitive reactance, and we also we give it the symbol X for, for reactance with a little subscript C to indicate that it's for, the, for capacitor. Now we know the relationship between the peak voltage and the peak current. What about this relationship of uh, this phase relationship between the voltage? Actually, before we do that, let's look at an example, a few examples of, of this capacitive reactance and how it varies with, with frequency. So let's say we have a capacitor here. And it's a 15 nanofarad capacitor. And the frequency of a signal applied to it is 5 kilohertz. So this capacitive reactance is going to be is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. We know F and C, so 1 over 2 pi times 5k times 15 nano, 15 nanofarad. And so that capacitive reactance works out to
2,122 ohms. Voltage over current gives us the unit ohms. Passive reactance is measured in ohms. The same capacitor, what happens as frequency changes? So here's my frequency, and in the case of 5 kilohertz, capacitive reactance is 2,122 ohms. But what if I was to increase that frequency of the signal way up to 1 gigahertz? Well, it's going to work out to 0 0.0106 ohms, a much higher frequency, a much lower capacitive reactance. Now, what if I drop this signal way down to 5 hertz? So really, really low frequency. The capacitive reactance is going to work out to 2.12 mega ohms. So you can see a capacitor, the effect of a capacitor in, in with respect to frequency is that it's going to have a higher effect. It's going to look more and more like an open circuit the lower the frequency is. Now the second thing to look at when we're looking at the relationship between voltage and current is look at the phase relationship. And going back to what we looked at at the beginning, I said I'm going to give, I'm going to create a voltage across the capacitor that's got some peak voltage and it's a sine wave with no phase shift. And then I plug that equation into the equation for, for, a capac for the current through a capacitor and I found that the current through the capacitor is equal to some peak current and it's a cosine wave. So it's still sinusoidal but it's got a phase shift with respect to the sine wave and both of these have the same frequency. So if we were to put this in terms of, of, sine, of a sine wave it's going to be IP times the sine of 2 pi FT plus some phase shift. And a sine wave, that phase shift is it's a 90 degree phase shift. Or if we're working in radians, it's a phase shift of pi over 2. So this current is actually leading voltage by 90 degrees. And if I was actually able to, if I was able to plot out both voltage and current over time, I would get uh, functions that look like this. Here's my current in, in black and here's my voltage in red and, you can, and if we define this at, at, as time zero you can see the, the current is going to reach its peak at time zero and after 90 degrees is when the voltage reaches its peak and so we've got this phase difference between the current and the voltage of 90 degrees where the current is leading the voltage by 90 degrees. Now here's a, a silly mnemonic to help you remember if you don't want to go through this all this derivation again and the silly mnemonic is Eli the Iceman and this, this mnemonic helps us both for capacitors and inductors and for capacitors this is, this is what we want to, what we want to, to look at this part, this part of the mnemonic and that's for current and that's for E for voltage sometimes we use the, the letter E for voltage instead of V and here we've got current coming before voltage and that C is for a capacitor current comes before voltage in a capacitor. So a little silly mnemonic to help you remember the, the phase difference between the two. Well actually you'll need to remember what the, the, the phase difference is 90 degrees. You'll, this will help you remember which comes first, the current or the voltage. Now when you combine these effects of the, the magnitude relationship between voltage and current and the phase difference between voltage and current this leads to the capacitive impedance or the, the impedance of the capacitor. So capacitive impedance has both a, an, um, an amplitude and a direction. So in this case the capacitive impedance uh, we usually give it by the, the letter Z and since it's got a voltage, it's got an amplitude and a direction we designate it as a, as a vector and we give it a lowercase c to indicate capacitive capacitance. So this capacitive impedance has a magnitude, which is the reactance, and it has a direction. And that direction is the, is the phase shift that it creates between the voltage and the current. And since current is leading voltage, we can also say voltage is lagging current, and so our phase shift is 90 degrees. We could also write this in rectangular coordinates and since it's 90 degrees so this would be if we had a if we're looking at a two-dimensional plane here 
and we're dealing with, with vectors, we're dealing with lines here from the origin, we're going to have a, a, a vector in, in this particular direction downwards. So this gives us an angle of negative 90 degrees, and the length of it is the reactants. And then, in, so that's in, this is in polar coordinates. In rectangular coordinates, well, in the horizontal axis, which we often, for, for this type of system, I won't get into it too much, but we label this the, the, the real axis, and this is the imaginary axis. What we're actually dealing with here are, are complex numbers. I don't want to get into that too much. There's, there's uh, lots of video resources that you can can look into to to get some refreshers on on imaginary numbers. But just think, just remember that it's a, a two dimensional two dimensional number, or it's a it's a vector that we can express in polar coordinates here or rectangular coordinates. So it's got uh, zero in the x direction, and it's got x c in the y direction or in the real in the imaginary direction. So this is 0 minus jxc, and this j is designating that it's in the, in the imaginary axis. Sometimes you'll see this as an i. Typically physics applications will use this as an i. In the electronics application, we use it as a j so we don't get confused with the commonly used i for current. Now this capacitive impedance can give us sort of like an, an Ohm's law. I'll put it in quotes here because it's not really Ohm's law. Ohm's law for for um, AC circuits with a capacitor, and the reason I call it Ohm's law is because it's showing us the relationship between voltage and current. But the reason it's not really Ohm's law is because it's not really resistive. So this relationship between voltage and current. So I've got a, a current, a voltage expression, and a current expression, and if I divide the two, that gives me the impedance across the capacitor, or the impedance of the capacitor. Now let's do a couple of examples here. Okay, we've got a, a voltage source over here, a sinusoidal voltage source, and it's got a peak voltage of 15 volts, and it's got a frequency of 1 kilohertz. 1 kilohertz that's applied to a capacitor over here, and this capacitor has a capacitance of 1 microfarad. And what we want to find is an equation for the voltage. Uh, we have we have the voltage. We want to find an equation for the current through the capacitor. So the, that equation for the voltage, Vc of t, is it's got some peak voltage. We're going to define it as a sine wave with no phase shift. Um, since everything is all well, these phase shifts are just relative, we can pick any point to be our our zero phase shift point. So our voltage will have zero zero phase shift. So it's two pi ft, and the frequency in this case, of course, is 1,000 hertz, 1,000 hertz times time. And what we want to find out is what is the current? Well, the current, the relationship between the peak current and the peak voltage, it's the peak voltage over the capacitive reactants. So in this case, it's going to be the peak current will be 15 volts divided by capacitive reactants. Well, that's 1 over 2 pi times 1,000, times 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. And that works out to 15 over 159.2 ohms. And so the peak current is going to be equal 94.2 milliamps. And just by by remembering our mnemonic or just remembering the the how capacitors work we know what the relationship between of the phase between voltage and current current is going to be leading voltage by 90 degrees so our actual current is going to have a phase shift of 90 degrees so our ic of t it's got a peak of 94.2 milliamps and that's and it's going to be a cosine function 2 pi times 1000 t. Now we could we could have done this a slightly different way. Instead of writing out the full equations for the voltages and the currents, we could just treat these uh, the voltage and current as vectors and and the the impedance as a vector, where th this vector it's 
we 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 call these phasers these special types of vectors we call them phasers where they they these phasers are representing sine waves and the way that they represent the sine waves is the the length of the phaser the length of the length of the vector is the peak the peak voltage or the peak current and the direction that it's going in the the phase angle that it creates the well, the angle that it creates is the phase angle of the sinusoidal function so if we use this this phaser shorthand we, we don't have to use the we don't have to always be writing out a full equation like this one here. So I'm going to do this example using using the phasor notation. So I've got, in this case I've got a a uh, capacitor. And we'll just look at the capacitor in isolation here, and it's got a 500 milliamp peak current with a frequency. Let's go IP. It's 500 milliamp, and the frequency is 15 kilohertz. Uh, for this, the signal being applied across it, and it's the capacitance is a hundred nanofarad, and we want to find out the voltage peak, v, the voltage peak, and the the angle that it's going to create, the phase angle between voltage and current. So, our current as a vector is simply five hundred milliamps, and we're going to define it as having the zero zero degree phase shift, and the opposition that's that that's, uh, this uh, this is the signals experiencing is the is the impedance and that impedance is going to have a magnitude which is the in, in a capacitive reactance and it's going to have a phase shift and since it's for a capacitor it has this phase shift of minus 90 degrees and so, and if we figure out what the capacitance the reactive capacitance is that works out to 106.1 ohms Phase shift of minus 90 degrees, and then our voltage. This is this is where our sort of pseudo Ohm's law comes in. The voltage phasor is equal to the current phasor times the react the impedance phasor. So this is 500 milliamps with a phase angle of zero degrees, multiplied by 106.1 ohms with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees. Now the rules when we're multiplying these phasors together is the, the amplitudes multiply and the phase angles add. So 0.5, 0 0.5 amps times 106.1 works out to 53.05 volts with a phase angle of 0 plus minus 90 gives us ni minus 90 degrees. And, and this all makes sense because the voltage lags behind the current by minus 90 degrees. All right, one more example. And this time what we're going to do is we've got a capacitor with unknown capacitance. And what we want to do is figure out what is this capacitance. And when I, when I apply a voltage, I get a peak voltage of 20 volts and a peak current of 0.1 amps. Now I can again use this pseudo Ohm's law to figure out what the capacitance is. Well, first I'm going to have to figure out what the, what the inductive reactance is. And in this case, a capacitive reactance, I should say. The capacitive reactance is equal to 20 volts over 0 0.1 amps. And so that works out to 200 ohms. And 200 ohms, well, I also know that the capacitive reactance is equal to 1 over 2 pi Fc. So I guess the other piece of information I need to know over here is the frequency of these of these uh, of the signal that I'm applying. Let's say it's a thousand hertz. So I I know my capacitive reactance. Two and pi are constants. I know my frequency is a thousand, and what I want to do is solve for c. And so with uh, some manipulation, some algebra, I work out that the capacitance is. Oops, I forgot. Uh, I made a mistake here. This is not 2,000. This is 200 ohms. But anyway, when I work out what the capacitance is, I get 7.96 times 10 to the minus 7 farads for that particular capacitor. So hopefully you learned something about capacitors and AC circuits, and I will see you in the next video.